We'll finish Chapter 4 on linear and quadratic functions with Section 4.5, Inequalities Involving Quadratic Functions. So we'll do an exploration first to help us get to this concept. It says to graph this quadratic function. And so let's use the method where we analyzed all the different parts, um, finding the vertex and such. So we'll start with which direction it opens. And since a is negative 1, the direction of opening is what? Down, right. Opens down. So now let's find the vertex. We find that by using the formula x equals negative b over 2a to get the x-coordinate. So that's negative negative 4 over 2 times negative 1. So that comes out to be positive 4 over negative 2 or negative 2. There's the x-coordinate of the vertex. We'll plug in that negative 2 to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. And what do we get? Negative 4 plus 8 plus 5, or 4 plus 5, or 9. So the vertex is the point negative 2, 9. That's our, um, would it be a maximum point or a minimum point? It opens down, so it's going to be a maximum point. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals negative 2. So let's see what we have so far. The vertex is at negative 2, positive 9, and our axis of symmetry is this vertical line. Okay, let's find the y-intercept. That's easy to do. Plug in 0. Notice that this term would go away, this term would go away, and the only thing left would be 5. So we cross the y-axis at the point x is 0, y is 5. Using the axis of symmetry, then, we know if there's a point on this line two units away to the right, there's a point on this line two units away to the left. I just know that based on symmetry, and I don't even need to calculate it. All right, we know it opens down, so we definitely have two x-intercepts. We could analyze b squared minus 4ac to find out what that is, that, that it is a positive number. Um, but because visually we know we'll have two, we can go ahead and find out what those are. So to find the x-intercepts, we set the function equal to 0. Negative x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals 0. Now, this will factor, but it will factor a lot nicer if this is a positive one. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. And that will change the signs to what I want. I want positive x squared. So then it would be plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. That's just a little trick to get rid of a negative in front of the x squared and to make this part easier. OK, so that factors to what? x plus 5, x minus 1. So x equals negative 5 and x equals is 1. These are our x-intercepts, negative 5, 0, and 1, 0. Negative 5, 0, and 1, 0. So now we can sketch our graph. Okay, so this is about inequalities. So we have the four different inequalities here, and we want to use the, this graph now to solve this this um, inequality and give the answer in interval notation. Now, this says negative x squared minus 4x plus 5 is less than 0. Well, what is negative x squared minus 4x plus 5? That's f of x. So they're saying f of x less than 0. In other words, let's put it in words just so we make it clear. What values of x result in f of x less than 0, which means the same thing as saying y is less than 0. I'll just maybe make a note over here in parentheses, y less than 0. So that's what they're asking us. What x's give us y's that are less than 0? So we're going to use the graph. We're going to look at it physically to see visually uh, where are the y's 0. Well, out here, right, and as this continues, so all these x's coming from negative infinity until we get to negative 5. 
So from negative infinity to negative 5, but it has to be less than 0. At negative 5, it is 0. Y is 0. So we can't include negative 5. But this happens again, doesn't it? And here, all the Y values are positive. So it happens again, starting union that with this interval, starting at 1, not including 1, because we need to be less than 0, and positive infinity. These X values and these X values result in negative Y values. Okay, let's change it just a little bit and say less than or equal to. What values of, oh, I forgot to put my X there, didn't I? What values of X, that's what I meant to say. I probably said it and didn't write it. Result in F of X now less than or equal to zero. Okay, so all that does is say, now we want to include the negative five and the one. So we know it's less than from negative infinity to negative five, and it's equal to zero at negative five. Y is equal to zero at negative five and at one. So that's all that changes by putting the uh, any, change in the inequality to less than or equal to. Okay, I'm not going to write the sentence. Well, uh, let's write it one more time. We might as well. Now we want to know what values of x give us result in y values that are greater than zero. I think it's helpful to put it into words. Result in an f of x that's greater than zero. Well, we can see that between here, between here and here, all these x values greater than zero, but not at negative five. So from negative five to one, but not including negative five and one, because it has to be greater than zero. And then finally, what values of x result in f of x greater than or equal to zero? So that means we just need to include the negative five and the one. Okay, so what did we really need? We got all this information and we had the picture, but what did we actually use to solve the inequalities? What did we have to have? Well, we kept referring to the x-intercepts, right? And they ended up being in our intervals. So we definitely need the x-intercepts. Anything else that we got up here? Did we use the vertex? Nope, didn't use the vertex for anything. It doesn't matter how high this goes. We just need to know when we are above the axis, when we are below. Did we use the axis of symmetry? No, didn't use that for anything. Does it matter if it opens up or down? Think of it, if we had opened up, would that have changed anything about our answer? Yes, it would. So we need the x-intercepts and we need the direction of opening. That does make a difference in our answer. But where the vertex is, where the y-intercept is, none of those things are necessary for us to answer these questions. So as we go to the next, uh, look at some examples, we're not going to have to find all this information. We're going to want to know the direction of opening and the x-intercepts, and then we can answer the inequality.